What's up, Well.com? Hey, welcome back to the channel. I'm your host, White River Rambo, for another MIG Monday coming at you, but this time we're going to do a little bit of aluminum MIG on a boat repair. Stay tuned. If you've owned a boat for more than three seconds, you know the importance of these two things right here. The bow eye and the bow roller should have a male to female relationship. This bow eye should be going right up in here in the notch on the bottom side of the roller. Now it's very important it's the bottom side and not the top if you want to have uh, an easy on off relationship when it comes to put this boat in the water. Since the bow roller was up here and not down here on the bow eye itself and the trailer is very weak and the owner lives in Indiana and we don't care about your suspension, that's why this damage occurred. Accompany that with this boat being 1975 and being in excess of 45 years old the material is 80 thousandths and well that older material is a little bit more brittle than today's modern alloys that's why it's cracked that's why the damage happened it wasn't from loading it too hard it wasn't from anything else other than the trailer wasn't set up properly now how do you fix it this old fatigued metal is going to be very hard to weld although it can be welded since I can't get to the back side because there's a deck here, it's going to make that very challenging. I will weld it. However, I know that it's not going to be as strong as it once was. And even though this was made out of half inch round stock, I think it served its purpose and it's time to retire it. Now I could go ahead and simply weld this up with a spool gun on today's MIG Monday, but that's not how we do things here at White River Rambo Customs. I think we're gonna overdo it a little bit instead of just putting lipstick on this pig. All right, come on up here and let's see how ugly this really is. I like that shot angle, but the winch is in the way. I wish I could just like it. Ah, Houston, we have a problem. <laughs> so with a bunch of paint on here, we couldn't really see all of this, but once I got to grinding or wire wheeling, I realized that there was a repair on this already and somebody repaired it, welded it, and then they blended it so it couldn't be seen. I thought this was a dent when actually it is another piece of plate. Whoever welded it didn't do real well and the plate ends in a very bad spot. If they would have extended this on up to the top and give the roller more of a landing, I probably wouldn't be repairing this again. Now, this dent <laughs> is beyond welding, but we're gonna plate the whole thing so it doesn't really matter. To come over to this side, you can see this line right here was actually the edge of the plate and lack of fusion on that weld. And as far as our bow eye goes, you can now see what I could see earlier with paint on it and how it was cracked all the way around there. And would you know it, the cracking stops right at the end of the plate. So to fix all this, I'm going to cut out the center rib and plate the center part of this and then just weld the end of that rib. So as you can see, we've got our area prepped and it's not looking too bad. I've also went ahead and cut myself a piece of 3 16 plate. Now you can see we've got a little bit of shape to it and there's a reason for that. Once you put your plate up there, you wanna look and make sure that all the surfaces line up properly and there's minimal gaps. On the two corners down here in the bottom where that previous weld plate was, there's a high spot. So by removing the corner, my plate actually lays down a little flatter and I'm kind of cutting corners myself. Pro tip, once you get your plate cut, go ahead and mark the perimeter with a marker. That way, when you take the part away, you can look and see to make sure that your area is clean as possible. Clean as possible is the number one thing when it comes to welding aluminum. This piece of aluminum has been sitting in my shop for a while and I have no idea what's on it. Aside from dust and debris, there could be some oils or all kinds of contaminants as well as natural oxidation of aluminum. So, before I weld it, before I throw it up there, I want to make sure that I scrub 
that entire part down with some acetone as well as my perimeter I want to remove all of this paint dust left over from removing and prepping the surface once I get that done I should be ready to go ahead and tack this into place let me get to that point and we'll talk about some weld settings. Today's repair, we're gonna be running a Millermatic 212 with the auto set feature. Now this has been a pretty good machine for me for about the last decade because it allows me to have the machine set up with aluminum and steel at the same time. And as long as I have 75, 25 gas and 100% argon, I don't have any changeovers. Today we are running 100% argon at about a 35 CFH rate. And the wire that we're running is 035 4943 Hobart wire. How the auto set feature works on this machine, on the voltage side of the machine, I'm gonna turn the knob all the way down here to auto set, which has two selections, 030 and 035. Obviously we're on 035 today. On the feed rate side, I will set my knob to the base material thickness that we're running. Now currently I have it set at 14 gauge material, which is a little bit less than eighth of an inch thick. That's gonna be pretty heavy or pretty hot rate for what we're doing, but I can also adjust my heat settings with gun angle and arc length. Arc length on the spool gun is set with the wire feed speed rate. I can listen to my arc length and make adjustments as I see fit. If it sounds like sizzling bacon and I've got a good cold ripple coming behind the bead, well, that's gonna be pretty good. If it's too hot and it starts to burn through, I can just turn my feed rate down a little bit and that sound will be different, but it will actually have less dig in the puddle. So. Let's go ahead and tack this piece up and see what we get into. Now, in all MIG processes, it's very important how you tack up your piece. Ideally, I would tack up on the corners first, and depending on how long my run is, maybe I put a few tacks in the middle. You're trying to set the part up to where you can start on a tack and end on a tack. In this situation, I'm going to tack all of my corners, and then I think to start this weld out, I'll start right here in the middle, work my way to the end. When I come to start this side, I will start on top of that bead, right in the middle, right where I started initially, and then go this direction. These short sides aren't gonna warp out on me because this is much thicker material than our boat, which leads me to another portion. How do you know where to aim your wire as you're welding this? Now, always lean towards the thicker side, but make sure the thinner side is getting wet toes. If you have that going on, more than likely it's gonna work out pretty good. Gun angle is imperative when you're talking about welding thin sheet to thicker plate. Hey guys, I'm Kevin with JMW Fabrication, the Welding Business Owners Podcast. Today, I'm throwing away all my anti-spatter because I found this stuff, Born Eye Guard. It works awesome. It's actually a ceramic spray that keeps spatter off of everything. As you know, spatter from welding and cutting builds up on everything that you work on, from your tables to your tips to your cups to your torch heads and everything like that. This stuff is actually a ceramic spray that you spray on real lightly. It's a nice white powder and it doesn't even let it stick at all. We're all familiar with keeping a pair of needle nose pliers to get in there for our MIG nozzles and dig out the spatter because it sticks on there. This stuff doesn't even let it stick at all because it's a ceramic coating. We love using it on tables for repeated parts because then we're able to just wipe it off. It works great on MIG nozzles, plasma cutting torches, flame cutting torches, we spray it down on the table before we do projects, and we don't even have to worry about going back with the grinder and cleaning up any spatter at the end. It's especially nice if you have a really nice jig table and you can't take your grinder to that. It's good up to 1800 degrees Fahrenheit, and for the rest of the world, that's 1000 degrees Celsius. Because it's an actual ceramic coating, it sticks a lot better than any of the anti-gels or anti-sprays that you have. It's clean, it goes on white, put a nice little light coating on it, and you're good to go. So if you're tired of dealing with nozzle jelly, nozzle spray, check these guys out, Born I Guard, B-O-R-N-I-G-U-A-R-D.com.
I want you to take note of a handful of things. I was pushing, okay, but not pushing at a large angle. I was pushing at about 15 degrees, and generally I'm using gravity in my bead profile. So if this were to be laid flat on the table, I would have been at a 45 degrees of the two parts. But since we're almost overhead, we're at a 45 degrees the other way, my gun angle was damn near zero. Okay, right in the throat of that part. And as I'm moving, I wasn't just holding still and moving. Okay, there's a multitude of processes you can use. You can go forward and hesitate, go forward and hesitate. In my experience, welding thick plate to thinner material, a little whip, okay, is much better because you get less penetration and it is much easier to get wetter toes that way. It lets the heat kind of dissipate around the weld puddle without wire diving into one area all together at the same time. I'm watching two things while I'm doing that. The front of my bead, which you can see right here, the white etch line that is around the bead. I'm watching that white etch line and I never step past it. I run my wire right to the front of the puddle and then I kind of whip it back. Go right to the front of the puddle and I whip it back. Now that puddle is advancing the whole time. By doing it that way, I'm getting good penetration and my weld portal is staying clean. Now you can see how we started in the middle and worked our way out and the ripples in my little bead look pretty damn good. On this side, I was a little bit more out of position and I didn't feel as comfortable. I was nervous about that so I ended up moving a little faster. You can see the ripples on my bead are a little bit more elongated on this side. However, the toes are wet, top and bottom and the bead profile looks really good. The only slight high spot that I have right here in the center was where we started the initial bead both times. And it's very routine for your starts to be slightly cold. I also want you to note that once I come to the end and I come to where that tack was, I wrapped that bead around slightly. Now that tack being cold and I have a hot bead coming along to it, I wanted to go ahead and run over that, that way it melted in a little bit better and I didn't have a high spot when I start my bead going down. Now the only thing left to do is to go down and across the bottom. However, I'm going to put my other plate on and then stitch the two plates together and I'll show you how to do that as well. This bead almost is overhead and actually I'm going to run it like an overhead 4F position because in coming down it's uh, much easier to monitor my dig, how much heat I'm getting into the part, as well as watch the back of the puddle. Now, if I get too far, if I get over 90 degrees, there will be more soot in this weld. If I go too much of a down angle, I will have a hard time maintaining a bead profile that is ideal. Ultimately, it'll be undercut because I'll have to move so fast going down, I'm gonna weld this with my barrel straight on at a 90 from the part and at a 45 pushing in the throat of where these two pieces of metal come together. Well, boys and girls, what do you think about that? Plated top and bottom, and then I took a little bit of T-bar and made a bow eye. Not only that, it notches in around the bow eye roller just the way it should. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed my first ever MIG Monday and some aluminum spool gun repair. Yo. Hey, uh, I know I told you your boat was going to be done this weekend, right? Well, yeah, man. Like, you see that cold front's coming in, and I know it's pushing some ducks down. Your boat's done now if you want to go. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Hey, hang on a minute. Hey, for more welding content from educational to inspirational from industry professionals around the world, join us on the Weld app for your Android and iOS. <laughs> that's right, dude. Right, let me grab my wagon and we'll get out of here.